Oh boy, unwavering bonds. I completely forgot that we actually like completely did all of chapter 13 last time. Anyways, so I'm going to not be paying attention to this as per usual. I had to, well, I, you know what? Okay, I'm going to start the story from the beginning instead of spoiling it. Uh, I work at a job, right, in an office, you know, the project company that I work for, um, that has absolutely nothing to do with uh, air conditioning okay. duct work, of course. But um, anyways, the, uh, you know, I have to drive to work. It's, it's commute. It's a fine enough commute. It's like 20 minutes. It's not that bad, except the traffic is always terrible. But, you know, I just go in when the traffic isn't bad. So, you know, I get up this morning. I was working a little bit. I, you know, packed up my laptop to go to work. I put my bag in my car. And actually, no, I didn't put my bag in my car because I wasn't able to unlock my door with my key fob. <laughs> I was like, well, that's a little weird. So I'd stick my key into the key key opening, you know. I turn the key. I unlock the door. I get in. I try and start my damn car. It won't start. It won't even turn on. The battery's completely freaking dead. My battery died in my car. So, you know, it was a work from home day. That's fine, I guess. But, you know, it's so terrible working from home. I had to, you know, change out of my super uncomfortable working clothes into, like, you know, short shorts and a dry fit t-shirt. And then I had to, you know, sit at my desk and at least pretend like I was working for another, like, five hours. It was just, you know, god-awful. I hate working from home so much, you know. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, I know, I sound real broke up over it. But yeah, it was it was wacky. I got my dad to help me. Well, I say help me. I, he pretty much did the whole thing himself. He didn't actually let me do anything. Because it's his car anyways, but whatever. Um, I could have replaced the battery all myself. Except for the part where he took his car to go get a new battery from AutoZone. Or at least replace... Well, he did get a new one, but he also replaced the old one, I suppose. Or recycled the old one. Dang. God, God dang lead-acid batteries, you know? So that was fun. And I learned I learned all of these very helpful um, car battery replacement tips. Because you see, you know, electronics electronics is uh, very dangerous. You know, you can... you can it's, it's really easy to screw up, and they can go really poor. So these are some of the things that I learned, right? Um, you know, batteries... They're not that different from capacitors, so you want to make sure they're completely discharged before you try doing anything with them. So just take the biggest wrench you can find and slap it on those terminals, right? Just to make sure that the, the battery is completely done, right? And then, um, you know, because we're in the conventional flow or whatever, because that's how we consider, um, you know, circuits to flow, you always you always want to disconnect the positive terminal before the negative terminal, right? I think I should probably say now very blatantly that these are things you should never do. Never do these things. These are not do's, you know. I think it was probably bad enough that I said smack, smack a wrench down onto the terminals. Um, you know, because that's a terrible idea. Don't do that. I want to say I've, I've heard horror stories where, uh, you know... Uncle Uncle Jim didn't keep a good enough uh, grip on his wrench while they were working on something in the car. It it spans both terminals and immediately explodes because there's just that much freaking power in a lead acid battery. I don't know if it actually comes out all that fast because um, they are very different from capacitors. But you know, when you're talking about a battery that big that powers a dang car, uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna, you know, try my luck with trying to discharge it with a freaking wrench. <laughs> that ain't a wrench you're getting back. Is is another thing, you know. Um, also, you always disconnect negative first because negative is where it really comes from. The negative terminal. Now, electron flow is wacky in that I don't know if. Uh, well, anyways. What else did I learn, right? Um, you know, try and try and push the car uphill. You know, remember to leave it in drive while you're working on it. I don't know. In all honesty, those were the only things that I had thought of to say very blatantly about. You know, give terrible advice. I love terrible advice. I give it all the time. 
Go what else have I done? You know, I was going to mention this wacky nightmare that I had, but I had it like so long ago. Okay. And you know what it was? You know what it was? Um, oh, jeez. I said I wasn't going to talk about him anymore. I think I'm going to keep... Um, okay. He's going to come up again. You might know who I'm talking about. A certain old man who writes books. But um, we'll talk about him later, I guess. Just because there was a little... Not a caveat, but an add-on to what I had been talking about him about. And... I, uh, it's it's a good one. It's a doozy. It really it was a big revelation for me when I thought about it. You know. Um. But uh, let's see. So, I had this weird nightmare, like a couple months ago, and it's it was the kind of. It wasn't like a wake up in cold sweat kind of nightmare. But it was a, I still think about it, and it still freaks me out kind of nightmare, right? And it might have been a waking nightmare, you know? Where I'm, like, sitting there, and my head is just, like, still kind of in it. And I'm sitting there like, what the heck is happening? And I realized that, I realized, like, not too long ago, that the whole thing was a scene from, like, a manga I was reading. And I, I didn't even think about it at the time, because it was just so... It was a very disturbing dream. <laughs> Extremely disturbing. Like, the whole thing was just that... It was this guy who was, like, trapped on the ground, and then this other guy is just stomping him, basically. And it's not even so much as, like, repeatedly stomping, just that his foot is on his arm, and then it basically just, like, immediately crushes through his arm and then there's like femur breaker audio playing you know and that's just disturbing i don't like thinking about things like that i'm not a big fan of pain or blood but you know being bludgeoned isn't that bad at least he wasn't being punctured i hate punctures so anyways but and then i'm i'm sitting here just a couple weeks ago and i'm like wait hold on that was the beginning after the end <laughs> like Chapter 200 or whatever. Uh, it was just terrible. I'm like, that was actually like blow for blow exactly what happened in that one scene. Which I'm not going to explain further because it's maybe a bit of a spoiler. But, eesh. Terrifying. I don't want to think about that shit. I didn't like thinking about it the first time. But, you know. I can't wait until, uh, like... Two years from now, when I I have nightmares about face caving punch, you know, sure can't wait for them to animate that one. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Well, okay, I'll keep talking about anime. This is a One Punch Man reference, you know, uh, manga specifically because I read the manga. Because after season three of One Punch Man was very lackluster. I was like, I guess I'll read the manga, see if it's any better. And boy, did they leave it off at like the worst possible time. And then I finished the arc. And I'm not going to say midway through, but maybe like 85, 90% of the way through, there's some real kind of lee, you know? And I'm sitting there like, what happened to this guy that he's writing this scrap? Like, the series turns into to Attack on Titan for a full 10 chapters. Maybe 15. Maybe 20. It was a while. It took them a while to get back to the to the being goofy shit. And I'm in the meantime, you're like, Everyone's dead! What happened? You know? So that's gonna be fun to see in anime. That's gonna be so cool. I can't wait to watch all my favorite characters violently die. Uh... But hey, you know, I never actually finished Attack on Titan. I guess I'm going to have to go back and do that. Anyway, speaking of anime, I said I was going to talk about him again. I'm going to talk about him again. I was going to say my man, but he ain't my man. He's just some weird old guy, Piers Anthony. So, I realized after... Okay, I guess I have to preface this again. Piers Anthony, he's an odd fellow. He writes weird books. The weird books, I want to say the... The, the, the review that I read that uh, 
I kind of jive with, with it. Is like, uh, it's it's like it's like shitty shitty porn actor fantasy, you know, it, but with a bit less porn and more fantasy, you know. It's not all. It's not all like. Uh, excuse me, miss. I heard you needed your pipes cleaned. You know, but uh, you know the swords and sorcery aspect is quite enjoyable. But you know, people don't like the way peers writes women, which is. I suppose I can see that. You know, but I haven't read the book since I was like. I think I stopped when I was like fifteen. Which is maybe later than necessary, but I was well invested at that point. I stopped at like book 15 in the series, which is a great place to stop if you look up book six, book 15 of the Zant series. <laughs> it was a. I probably should have stopped before I got book 15 of the Zant series, but you know, um, some of the more interesting sounding titles were after that one, and I thought that that might be pertinent information. And now I'm thinking that none of it might be pertinent information. And I just feel kind of sad because, you know, Piers Anthony is the kind of guy who can write a really compelling story in a very involved world, in a very great world building, you know. It's very, very, very compelling. And it just be just, just, just weird enough that you sit there and you think, huh. <laughs> you know. And then I was thinking about it just the other day after I had finally said, I'm not going to talk about him anymore, and that's the end of the episode, you know. And I'm sitting there, I forgot to mention. The parallel that I had made the other day where it's kind of like To Love Rue, where it's it's like infantile humor mixed with porn. And um, I'm sitting there wondering, who the hell is the audience, you know. And I think we can sit here and be like, I think we know who the audience is, but, you know, <laughs> maybe it's just, maybe it's just not very bright people. Maybe, maybe young adults. I'll sit here and hope that it's supposed to be young adults, you know, but even then, I suppose there's still some kind of problem with that somewhere. I don't know. It's not like it's all in graphic detail, but, you know, kind of funny stuff, but infantile humor mixed with... Some sexual topics. It's kind of like, who is this for? And then I sat there and I'm like, hold on, this shit's actually written like it's some kind of edgy hero <laughs> anime. <laughs> it's written like a shitty gag manga. Fuck! Maybe that's why I like the series so much. <laughs> no, I don't know if I even really liked it all that much. I just, I liked, I liked the characters. At least the main characters. The side characters, I am in full agreement with some of the criticisms, where it's like, uh, this is not a great uh, interpretation of um, uh, certain people. You know? I'm like, well, it doesn't need to be. It's like the the, the maid that's on screen for uh, a minute and a half. You know, I'm like, I don't know if she needs to be Joan of Arc. I guess she doesn't need to be... Um, God, I don't know. Is there even a famous character that's kind of acts like I'm thinking? She doesn't need to be uh, Lady Godiva. I don't know. I don't even know who Lady Godiva is. I'm just going to act like I know who Lady Godiva is. She doesn't need to be Lady Godiva, but she... Uh, well, I guess... Whatever. I already said that. Huh? He's crying. He really wants to see his sister. I would love to show her to you. I would say that I would love to show you to her, but that would be a bit insensitive. What a fine fellow. We like Tachibana. Very nice. Although... Oh! Are we going to get to fight anyone in this episode? Huh? Okay, I guess that's a yes. Not happening. Oh, well. Seriously, they know everything, huh? You better not die, pal. I still haven't showed her to you. And not the other way around. Because of the whole, you know, blind thing. Oh, this guy looks important. Huh? How did they know? Oh, they look big, sort of. You're gonna have to go through me, pal. 
I work for the guy. What, you didn't come here because of my business card? Fellas, fellas, fellas. Oh, and Mr. One Hand's gonna help me out. Sick! I gotta say, really, really uh, sad what happens to this family. Like, seriously. One guy only has, like, one arm. The other guy only has, like, zero eyes. Seriously. Just kind of sad. Hold on, let me, uh... Let me just, uh... Hey, pal. There we go. Boy, I was grabbing that chair for a reason, pal. Boink. Ah, crap. I pressed the wrong buttons. I swear, I never expect... No one expects the Spanish Inquisition, but somehow I never expect... There we go! Oh! Oh! You can keep doing damage there! Very nice. Boink, 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 boink. Very cool. Let's do it again. Huh? Oh, yeah. That literally had nothing to do with the chair, but very cool. We like it. Alright, cool. We got another one, Velas. Okay. This same one again. Please tell me I'm not just, like, punching through there. Haha. <laughs> Resolute counter, my fellas. Ha. Ah. I gotta say, that is one thing that I'm actually making pretty good use of, the resolute counter. That's like the only thing I'm making pretty good use of, because everything else is like... I probably should just, like, not worry about trying to use it. Hey, pal. Get over here. That too. Anyways, I think I actually am going to start stop talking about the, the wacky old man the now. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh, wow. The, the buddy, the buddy, comp, he got Wombo comboed. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that was a thing. I wonder how many people have seen that screen, right? The, the Tachibana Kiryu Wombo combo. <laughs> uh... Good times, truly. Anyways, let's find a payphone, am I right? I want to get out of here, man. I have a I have a 50 minute The Witness recording to edit down. I don't want a 50 minute Yakuza 0 recording to edit down on top of that. You know? Did I mention that? Did I mention that? Yesterday's The Witness video took me 50 minutes to record. Because I was sitting around doing Jack Diddley squat for like 30. You know? <laughs> and then I gave up, so it doesn't matter. And yeah, we're gonna cut that part out. And I think I kind of said something like that in the video, but, you know... It could be more blatant, and I'm gonna make it even more blatant right back now. Where are you looking, pal? Of course we are. I'm always being watched. How do you think they know where I am at all times? The babushka? Oh. That's not a babushka. Really? You're not? Okay. Well, never mind. At least take cover, dude. Wow, that guy's kind of... I mean, he did... Well... No, yeah, that is left side. Is he... What in the heck? I don't know. At that... Metal pipe falling sound. I kind of heard a little bit of it in there. I did hear a bit of metal pipe falling sound in there. What was the point of that? For one, he did the little pew-pew. Okay. It doesn't sound like that, by the way. Um. <laughs> there is no worse adversary. A guy with a gun. I don't know, man. He looks, uh... He kind of looks like, uh... If Mao Zedong had a really, really bad day. Oh, that's not great. Oh, that's really not great. Oh, he's got the shoes, too? He's got the boots? My man. He looks like, uh, if, uh, Anton Shigur and, and, um... Well, honestly, the, the Mao Zedong parallel kind of stops with the hair. If Anton Shigur had shorter hair and different parents... <laughs> well, anyways... 
see if he had if he had a uh, you know if he had just you know given us a chance like a coin flip or something that would have been so much nicer but no he just had to start blasting right off the bat Chinese you know what I didn't realize before I started watching sobbed anime I watched I forget which series it was but I watched like an episode or two of some Chinese it's not really an anime but a Chinese animated series thing you know I never really realized how much the sounds not like I understand that the language sounds different I'm not that's not what I'm saying but like I didn't realize that while I'm watching anime subbed and I'm listening to the voices that I'm actually listening to the voices you know and just the sound of Chinese was so like jarringly different from the sound of Japanese even though I didn't understand what they were saying at all that I wasn't able to watch the show <laughs> we're gonna hear a gunshot I got a piece of glass for you pal it'll make a nice necklace let me let me put it on you for oh no no no, no. That's fair. And yet, you shot him. Normally, your contract is to kill people and to not kill other people. So, you know. Oh, well, I guess... Fair enough. He isn't trying to kill me. Anymore. He was just trying to get me out of the way, I guess, with a shot to the chest. And one in the leg. Dang good shot, especially with that thing from however far away he was. But like, not cool, man. That hurt. At least a little bit. Maybe even more than a little bit. Don't tell me Mr. Shakedown's going to come rob me or something. Don't tell me this is the end of the chapter. Okay, that's that's better. We're basically watching a movie at this point. Ooh, exposed duct work. Good stuff. We like it. A nice little wall unit right there. Might even be a window unit. I don't know. I don't really see the window, but, you know, saw it through the window. That's fine. Good stuff, truly. Who the heck patched me up? One of the uh, Chinese doctors, perhaps, in uh, Asia Town? Don't know. Eh. Who's this? Ah, that guy. I forgot that we met him. Uh, three whole hours and you've just let me li lie here? Come on. Oh, well, fair enough. Well, wasn't he taken by the assassin guy? Did they really hire a Chinese assassin just to... Well, oh, maybe. Yeah, why not, you know, right? Did they, they, what, did they fly him out or something? <laughs> Uh, they flew him down for a job. Very, very nice. Anyways. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of done with uh, things to say, so... If you're here to pay attention to the story, uh, I'm sorry, but you picked the wrong channel. Uh, but I guess I'll let it play out, and then find myself a payphone, right? They're payphones, right? I guess they're public telephones. I'm not entirely sure if they have the whole paying for things concept in Japan. Probably. But, you know. I don't know. I can only imagine they're payphones. They look like payphones. It might just be phone booths, though, you know? <coughs> uh. You ever just get hungry? I'm kind of hungry right now. You know? I would like to eat something. Preferably food. Food is my favorite thing to eat. You know, it's much better than eating shit. Yep. Anyways, I think I probably actually just like shut the hell up and have this play out. I hate to be lazy about this, but you know. It's not like me commentating over this is any less lazy, if I'm being honest, at this point. I mean, I've already talked about all the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, let's run down the list. Um, that one nightmare, having to change my car battery, 
kind of connected to that, the, the car battery things that you shouldn't do, that I'm acting like you should do, like discharge it with a nice good size wrench. Um, again, do not do that. Do, do not ever do that. Um, let's see, talking about the beginning after the end, sort of, in so far as it being related to that terrible and disturbing nightmare. We talked about anime again. We talked about how Piers Anthony writes like he's uh, an etchy anti author. Um, talked about how, uh, um, uh, except without the titties, actually. I should walk that one back because etchy typically refers to large breasts, even though etchy. It's really just H, referring to hentai, which means pervert in Japanese. Why do I know these things? Because. Um, so I'll, I'll walk that back, um, because I don't, I don't know if there was any like real mention of like big old, big old bazongas in, in Piers Anthony's work so much as like young girls underwear. What a guy, right? Um, I would honestly rather it be about the form, if it were me. But I guess when I was 15, panties were just so interesting. Run that back. 13 or 14, all right? Though then again, I did already say, go ahead and look up book 15 of, of the Xan series, so, you know. How about that? I'm not going to say the name. All right, you're going to have to look it up yourself. And then you'll have that on your computer. How about that? Uh, good stuff, truly. Not the not the book series. Well, you know, a couple of the books are all right. But the whole series kind of shot for me now. <laughs> Anyways, I think I got to check on a pay phone. That's what I got to check on. What else did I do? What have I done? Please tell me I can find... Oh, nice. They do have a phone in here. Good stuff, truly. It's a good thing to have a landline connected in here. Anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about. Can you believe it's the 1st of August? It's August already. How is it August already? Sheesh. Terrible. Terrible stuff. Anyways, we'll maybe talk about other things like August on the next episode. Till then, though, like, comment, and subscribe, or I will beat you to death. Goodbye! Yeah, I hope that one. I thought it was pretty funny.